Hey guys, it's Mathel here, and today I'm going to try and tell you everything you need to know about my low life Beyblade, or Blade Vortex, uh, which the character right now is level 91, that's not terribly important, but it is low life, which means it wears a shavs, reserves below 35% mana to make use of pain attunement, which is 30% more spell power, and it uses Skyforth boots. Now that is basically the reason I made this character, because I found a pair of Skyforths and I wanted to put them to some sort of good use. I figured a good low life build was the best way to do it. And I pictured Blade Vortex having some serious potential in this situation. What Blade Vortex does is you click once and it'll cast a spinning blade around you, which kind of acts like Cyclone. You just run through and it will spin and kill things. And it lasts 10 seconds at this point, or almost 11 now. The base duration is 5 seconds, but what you try and do is scale duration through things such as the increased duration gem and increased duration passives from the passive tree. There is this cluster here and this cluster here. As you scale increased duration, the blades will last longer, meaning that you have to cast less and less to keep them up longer and longer. They go up to a stack maximum of 50 stacks, and that makes them a very ideal boss killing sort of uh, skill, as you can wind up to 50 through the use of Vile Haste, Vile Clarity, and then go in and kill things immediately. So it's very, very heavy damage when you can start stacking up really high through the use of increased duration, faster cast speeds, echo, all that sort of stuff. The skill right now has 38 crit without power charges and up to 54 crit with my 5 power charges, meaning it crits pretty much all of the time. So scaling crit multi is a very good idea for this skill. I am also using controlled destruction, which reduces my crit by 100%, but that doesn't quite mean what you might think it does. It does not reduce the crit off of the skill by 100% doesn't mean that the base crit goes from 6 to 0. It just means that after, at the end of the day, you're taking off 6 crit from the skill. As you can see, 100% 6 crit. Which means you're only losing 6 crit and gaining 44% more spell power. So the reason we actually use this gem is because it gives you more spell power, which is more physical damage, which converts to more cold damage, which actually lets you shatter more. So, this is actually one of the better gems you can use for the skill. Gain 3k damage there, from 9 to 12k. So as far as the actual link setup goes, your staples are Blade Vortex, Echo, Life Leech, then Control Destruction. Uh, increased Area was my fifth choice, and then Increased Duration was my last choice. Increased Duration ends up just being a nice quality of life. Um, gem to use as you will keep up stacks better throughout your maps. Alternatively you can also use added fire as a whole bunch more damage. There it is, another 3k, which is quite a big deal and it gives you as much fire damage as your cold now. But I like increased duration more and just put in added fire if you really want for certain boss kills when you can still hit 50 stacks even without increased duration. But that's your main setup. The sixth link is pretty good but not completely vital. And remember, you do need a Shavs for this build in particular. Beyond that, what do we need to say? Um, yes, yeah, so that's the main setup. We have an alternate Blade Vortex setup, because the way the skill works is you stack up four times as you want, then all you got to do is press your other Blade Vortex, and now you've got a fifth stack. So somewhere in there is flying around a different Blade Vortex to your main setup, which happens to be this one. Blade Vortex, attached to Curse on Hit, attached to Assassin's Mark, and nothing there, just Rallying Cry. So the main, the important thing here is, when you charge up your usual skill, occasionally you press E, which is your alternate skill, and that means that whenever you're running around, one of these stacks are going to be flying around with a Curse on Hit setup, and they will always be hitting pretty much all the time around you, to curse everything around you. So it's a really brilliant curse on hit setup. 
when you can um, integrate it into your setup. So it becomes, it, it's a little tricky to get used to it at first, but you, you know, you press these, and you get used to just pressing your alternate setup about once every 10 seconds to keep up your cursors. Which brings me to the fact that you don't even need Skyforce boots to keep up your power charge on crit. All you gotta do is attach your cursor on hit setup, a power charge on crit in there as well, as a fourth link. And then all of a sudden you are maintaining power charges off of a shitty button press every 10 seconds, which is really, really easy. And that opens you up to use something like Lion Eyes Paws instead of Skyforth Boots. And all you do then is just whirl around instead of running ever. Because Lion Eyes Paws take away all of your take away all of your movement speed. Where are we looking? Here we go. So these are your other low life alternate boots. They take away all of your movement speed, but you cannot be stunned with them anymore. So they're pretty worth using if you cannot get some Skyforth boots. Alternately, you can get an Eye of Chayula, which means you cannot be stunned as well, and then put on some other different type of boots. But your next slot is pretty important for DPS, so bear that in mind. But the build is actually nowhere near as expensive as you think it is, because you don't need Skyforth boots, they're more or less a luxury. That said, they do have some good mana, which helps towards your overall mana regen, which is another important aspect of the build. Currently I have 137 mana regen, and that is through um, the use of a low level clarity, about level 13 right now. And on top of that, I have quite, I've tried to go out of my way to get mana regen on rings, as well as some mana if I can. And that's more or less how you get as much mana regen as you can for the build. As well as that, I pick up Dreamer, which is a very good use of two points. Gives you a boatload of mana and a bit of mana regen. Um, do whatever you got to do to get more mana regen if you need. That's what I've done. As well as that, I press Rally and Cry while actually playing through maps and all that. And that helps sustain. Because right now, I can't quite sustain my cast, especially on a 6 link. It's easier on a 5 link, 66 mana, and I can pretty much indefinitely sustain that. But once you get to six link levels, it gets really tough um, because that is a very heavy multiplier, 1.4 times. But it does last longer, so it kind of cancels out in the end. But on, other than that, you still use Vile Clarity every now and again just to keep up um, stacks and casts. And I primarily just use it for boss kills. So just before a boss kill, I'll pop Vile Haste, I'll pop Vile Clarity, I'll get to 50 stacks easily without worrying about mana, and then get in there. So mana, fix it however you really need to, but I've done it through a bit of um, mana regen and extra mana. As well as that, you could use a couple of Elrion rings, because the rings aren't anything too specific to go around, but minus 8 won't really take too much of a dent out of your fairly hefty cost. So what's next? The weapon. What kind of weapon we're looking for is a dagger. A dagger opens up the opportunity to well, so I think that is probably your best bet. You can use a wand if you really want, and then just rely entirely on running. That is mostly for the Skyforth option, because you will still have a lot of movement speed. But on your dagger, what you're looking for is a platinum, or a crisp base, which are 80% crit bases. A really high spell crit roll, like 100+. plus. Some crit multi, that is very important. Added fire, added cold, added lightning to spells, that's nice, but it's not It's not what's going to be the most important part of the build. And then, of course, spell power. So I crafted this thing by myself, and it worked out really well. This is essentially exactly what you're looking for. Ideally, I would have rather uh, added cold to spells to give me more cold damage for the shattering, but that's just fine still. Now the point here is you try and get crit multi and spell power because you want as much crit multi and spell power for your cold damage here. The more of the more crit multi, the more spell power you can get, the higher your cold damage will be and the higher your cold crits will be, which actually lets you shatter monsters, and that is one of your biggest defensive mechanics right now for this build. If you don't have a lot of crit multi, if you don't have a lot of base, cold, and spell power, you're not going to be shattering just about anything. Especially not cold resistant monsters like the porcupines that run around in high end maps. But with my level, and especially with a taste of hate as well, you end up getting quite a lot of cold damage and quite a lot of uh, top end crit multi 
so you do end up shattering and Herald of Ice helps a lot as well in that situation. So try and get a lot of crit multi and a lot of spell power on the build. The uh, rest of the gear is pretty straightforward. You go for a high ES hubris, get a few resists if you can. Mana helps too. Um, I just kind of chaos span this one. I'd go for anything like 300 plus for a hubris for ES and then try and get some resists. Uh, shield, anything like 300 plus would be really good as well. Some spell power, ideal. Spell crit if you can get it. Some resists if you can get them. But the more ES, the merrier. Malagaras. Good thing about Malagaras is they have some dexterity, which helps fill out um, dexterity to use Blade Vortex. So Malagaras are ideal, especially because of their crit and crit multi as well. If you can't get them, Phase Breakers are great too. They fill out a lot of crit multi, which is very important. So Phase Breakers are just as good, pretty much. The only difference is it's a little less comfortable for dexterity. But yeah, the Malagar is a kind of a luxury. Face breakers do a really good job too. Belt, you're looking for something with strength, ideally, and some good resists to fill out for the build. You're going to need a bit of strength for the build, so uh, a, belt, a belt is a good idea to get it. <laughs> Sorry, I have a crappy throat from a run earlier, since it's very hot in Australia. Um. Rings, like I said, uh, there's nothing too specific you're really going for, but high mana regen, high mana, some resists, that's all really good stuff. You're probably going to want some strength or some dexterity on either one of these, just to fill out for the things you need. If you're wearing Lion Eyes Paws, that actually fills out a lot of your strength and dexterity, so try and get higher rolls for those. Beyond that, just uh, some resists, some mana, some ES. And for the amulet, uh, as I mentioned, crit multi, very important, so try and get a high crit multi roll, it's not very hard to do. On top of that, I went for cast speed, spell damage, some ES, strength, dexterity, uh, resist if you can. There's, all really, there's a lot of really good stuff you can get in amulets that's not too expensive, just look around, but crit multi is your number one priority, I would say. Yeah, pretty much that. And then if you can, car speed's a really good fill out too, because that is a quite efficient use of car speed on your neck, since you get a lot there. Now as for flasks, um, I use in series promise, gives you a lot of added chaos when you press it. It's a very nice boost, especially for bosses, and as well as that, it's a nice leech boost. I'm running with a quicksilver, which helps me move around when I don't feel like whirling, and it's a pretty nice way of utilizing the blade vortex skill. Taste of Hate, I only just picked one of these up, so before that I was just using a granite with an armor roll, which gives you quite a lot of armor, but Taste of Hate is also an offensive buff, which is why I've decided to start using it. If you're just running a granite, as you can see, have uh, what absolutely zero armor, pop your granite, 45% reduction. So it is very tanky. If you really want, you can use it in conjunction with your Taste of Hate, but I can't really afford to drop either of these bleed or freeze flasks. Maybe you could use it over your series Promise, over your Quicksilver, but a combo of those two would be very strong if you can get it involved. Beyond that, I have a Ruby and a Topaz. You need a bleed flask, you need a freeze flask. Especially being low life, a free freeze flask is very essential. The other important thing to note is they are Surgeon's flasks chance to gain a flask on critical strike. That actually is very sustainable through blade vortex, mostly on bosses. When you have blade vortex, you're just running through things, you're killing pretty quickly, you're not going to be regening too much from the surgeon's mod. When you're up against a tanky fight and you have a lot of stacks and you're just constantly hitting it, these flasks are recharging almost to full all the time. So the surgeon's nerf hasn't actually affected something like blade vortex at all for the most part, because it's still a very effective way of getting flask charges back. Moving on, the aura setup I have chosen to go with, um, part of the reason I went low life is because I wanted to fit in as many sort of good auras for this build as possible, since Blade Vortex benefits heavily from haste, benefits heavily from hatred. If you can fit in um, Herald of Ash, that's good too, but I went with Herald of Ice, 
for the shatters, as I thought that was pretty important. Then you got discipline and a low life, uh, low level clarity. On blood magic, I'm running discipline, herald of ice, and blood magic. So you, again, you're going to need a high level blood magic for this, with all of the reservation I took from the tree, which is here and here. I believe you should be able to get away with this node if you don't have Skyforths to cover that 6% reduced so you can still fit all of this in. But as I said, haste with the current um, amount of auras and every, uh, aura buffs and everything I have is actually pretty important. Ends up giving you something like 20% cast speed, a bunch of movement speed, and attack speed for your Whirling Blades, so it's very nice. Hatred does a huge amount of your damage. As you can see, 400 cold get rid of it. Almost all of my cold is gone. It is a huge buff. You damn near have to get this one in. Herald of Ice, it's not going to give a huge buff to your actual cold damage to the uh, Blade Vortex itself, but the shadows that it provides is very, very crucial indeed. Discipline, no need to explain that, and a low level clarity. So pick whatever kind of level you want for that one. I can't really afford to reserve too much more because it'll just leave me with not enough mana to cast. So I think that's going to be kind of um, different for everyone as they uh, put that one in. What am I missing to actually turn this on? I don't know. Hatred. There we go. Um, beyond that, I'm using Vile Haste and Increased Duration in my dagger. So Vile Haste is lasting about 13 seconds. Uh, you can pretty much sustain that throughout a map comfortably, thanks to your other Increased Duration node. Uh, in my helm, I have a Vile Clarity, Casting Damage Taken, and Immortal Call. That's very important as a sort of defensive mechanic. It'll proc every now and again, just getting you away from melee. Summon Flame Golem. One of the Flame Golem instead of a Ice Golem, because that small amount of crit just isn't as good as the damage increase, I feel. Golem right there gives me a good 500 DPS. Pretty solid choice. Uh, your Whirling Blade setup is just Whirling Blades and faster attacks. If you can fit Fortify in into your setup somehow, by all means do it. It's very worth it. Clarity, Hatred, and the rest I have explained. Moving on to the passive tree, you can start as a Scion or a Witch. You can also be a Shadow, but that complicates things a bit more as you have to take 5 damage nodes to begin with rather than a whole bunch of defense and a couple of damage. But sign works as well, or through this way, or hell, even through that way if you really want. It's a little bit customizable, but this is the passage tree I've landed on. So as a witch, you have two pretty efficient spell nodes here. You go through the ES nodes, you grab more ES nodes. This is the only AoE we get from the tree, paired with the AoE gem. Ends up being as much AoE as I possibly need, and then you swap in Conk for bosses and heavy single targets. Um, pretty much get all of the spell crit on the tree, which is that and this, and I'm still filling out that. Uh, the flask nodes are very nice for pretty much everything, so do get these. They help a lot throughout, mostly boss kills. When um, your ruby flask, for example, instead of just giving 10 max res, it now gives 13, so up to 88. That's quite handy. And then all your other overpowered flasks get even more overpowered. So definitely get that. Um, two power charges. Actually, I only get one. My bad. Uh, one power charge here. This power charge is not particularly efficient the way they've built it now. So to get it, you need to use three points, and that just doesn't seem worth it anymore from either end. Um, crit multi, as I said, I tried to fill out as much crit multi and spell power on the build as I could. Your passive tree is a bit squeezed for things like that because you're getting so many aura nodes and uh, ES and spell crit. But since you're getting arcane vision, this crit multi is very handy. You grab your pain attunement, put an energy within into this socket to get as much ES out of this uh, node as possible. Um... What else? This uh, increased duration node, I can't, couldn't justify going down here and getting this one as well, as much as I would have liked to. If you start as a scion, you could probably justify going through these resist nodes and grabbing this if you could fit it into your build. 
it's not a terrible idea because if you have both of these clusters you won't be using the increased duration gem I don't think anyway because that feels like a bit of a waste um, besides that did fill out a bit of mana over here as well to get this jewel socket as well as the 40% regen uh, then um, just this through the life or through the ES the spell crit get your aura buffs here get a ghost reaver over here which is essential to turn your life leech into energy shield leech get the crits more evasions evasions are energy shields fizz damage fizz damage and crit some cast speed you're down here vile pact you're gonna need this so definitely get vile pact when you have life leech and ghost reaver and then another jewel socket and charisma itself as far as jewels go this is a pretty ideal jewel spell damage area damage uh increased max energy shield if you can't get one that looks like that this is also an ideal jewel spell damage physical damage area damage what you're mostly looking for is spell damage like flat multipliers so spell physical area there's a lot of jewels out there like that so mix and match if you can car speed's good too crit multi is good as well energy shield percent like i said um, increased max mana on this one not a complete waste not exactly what i'm looking for but that's okay too for jewels Besides that, I'm not sure there needs to be anything else said for the build. Um, leveling is kind of tough if you don't have all the right gear and stuff. I just went with a couple of Elrond jewelries and uh, tried to pick up a bit of the life nodes like this and this early on. But Blade Vortex is a really good skill to level with, just that unless you actually spec into life you will probably be close to dying near the end of Merciless several times. So, you could choose to spec into some life nodes, something like that, 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 and then respec them later. Otherwise, Blade Vortex is a really good leveling skill, and feel free to use it to level with. That's about all I've got for this build, Low Life Blade Vortex. It is a uh, very fun, very effective build. I've killed Hubert's area with it something like 10 times. I've yet to fail her on. It does get a bit sketchy. But when you have enough ES, I'd say something like 8k is about as much as you're going to get. And once you fill out as much damage as you possibly can, Hubert's area becomes pretty much a face roll. There's not much she can do to stop your annihilation. And it becomes a very easy sort of kill. Not not a very high skill-based um, requirement there, once you get the right sort of numbers. So I hope you guys try the build out if you ever come across a Shavs. And uh, yeah, have fun with the build, have fun with Blade Vortex. I will see you guys next time.